Cruise with Gina Gina. The news with Gina Grad. Well, starting with this because this alert came in uh, just a few minutes ago. Saturday Night Live, uh, according to CNN, has fired one of its most recent hires, Shane Gillis, just days after the video of him uh, making comments, uh, bigoted comments, came to light. Um, this is what the SNL spokesperson uh, had to say on behalf of Lorne Michaels in a statement to CNN. After talking with Shane Gillis, we have decided that he will not be joining SNL. We want SNL to have a variety of voices and points of view within the show, and we hired Shane <laughs> a on narrow variety. <laughs> yep, on the strength of his talent as comedian and his impressive audition for SNL. We were not aware of his prior remark that has surfaced over the past few days. The language he used is offensive, hurtful, and unacceptable. We are sorry that we did not see this clip earlier and that our vetting process was not up to our standard. Um now, the interesting thing is another story I pulled for today was from Andrew Yang, presidential mm-hmm. candidate, who actually came out and spoke out on behalf of Shane Gillis. And this was going to be the story, but now the story is that he's been fired. So shortly after joining the cast, now we know he's been fired, uh, Shane was faced with this huge backlash for this old jokes that were uh, you know, racist against Asian people. And- I was talking to Max Zapat about it. I, I didn't hear it. But the first, I, I think the first thing I ask is, is it funny? Because I'm curious, mm, like, and odd. I know, it, it, look, there are plenty of jokes that are funny, and then someone goes, "Not funny." That's a well, that's this, a cop out. Well, I'm not is, saying you're doing no, it. No, this I'm is saying, mostly just like imitating, like replacing L's with R's. Like it wasn't really super clever. Right. That's what right. That's the point I'm making. Yeah. Um, like there was a lot of neuter talk instead of noodles, and that went on for right, I don't yeah. know two minutes. So. Um, So Shane tweeted out a sort of an apology saying, I'm a comedian who pushes boundaries. Sometimes I miss. I'm happy to apologize to anyone who's actually offended by anything I've said. But then Andrew Yang got involved in a conversation, found a found a place for uh, him to. To, to say a few words. He said on a Twitter, I prefer comedy that makes people think and doesn't take cheap shots, but I think we have a soci- as a society become excessively punitive and vindictive concerning people's statements and expressions we disagree with or find offensive. I don't think people should be losing their jobs unless it's truly beyond the pale and egregious, and they did, did just fire him. Well, now we're losing jobs before they start. Right. Um, also, anything... That falls under the heading of joke, even if it's ham-fisted attempt at joke. Anything that falls under the heading of, of, of attempting to entertain. Like, you know, even take something like piss Christ or something like mm. that. Like, it's, it's there art. to be provocative. Yeah. You're trying to stir. We're starting to start a conversation. And it's like, it, I look at it as a cop out because <laughs> if, if you're Rembrandt, you're Rem, Rembrandt or you're basically Yoko Ono of the artist world. But either way, you're allowed to do it. It's yeah. just allowed. People, you know, people might like it. People might not like it. But if it's falling under the heading of an attempt at any kind of art, joke, entertainment, you're allowed to try it yeah. in, 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 in my world I, because it has a context. I mean, it was an entire – I just did a you know three-hour roast while everyone made fun of Baldwin. Everyone loves Baldwin, you know what I mean, and said the most war- horrible things mm. in the world about a guy with, all, with context, mm. with complete context. I mean, uh, if you said that stuff out of context, like waiting for a parking spot to open up <laughs> – on a, on a New York street, he yeah. punched every single person that spoke to him right. instead of laugh at every single thing that mm-hmm. was said. That, there's context. There's all, also, I don't know. It's like saying football played on a football field on Sunday or Saturday at the college level or Friday. I can keep going into Pop Warner. <laughs> <laughs> now, arena teams. No, no. Guy Guys flying up and trying to kill each other are completely completely acceptable Celebrated. in this context yeah. of what this is. If you're walking to your car from the Costco and somebody flies up and puts one of those hits on you, we got lawsuits and the cops involved. Like everything is a, where are we and what are we doing? Yes, they're guys trying to get their heads taken off. Uh, they're out on the field. They, they have, they have participated mm-hmm. in this. To me, first things first, when it's joke, when, when it's falling under the heading of joke, unfunny joke or even um oh that 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 didn't make sense or whatever but but there's an attempt at at the humor 
I, it usually falls into sort of the difference between murder and a sort of vehicular manslaughter where the guy was backing out of the driveway and the kid, neighbor kid went running across mm-hmm. the thing and the back window was fogged up. Like, I, I don't, I don't, that guy, that, that guy needs to go to jail. Like, he, he really doesn't. Right. He, he really, it is sad. And, and I disagree with the outcome, but is he a murderer? Like, does he need to be put behind bars? Like, what was the what intention? A, yeah, it was like his back window was fogged up. It was raining a little, and he was running late for work. Do you think he meant to run? We got a dead kid. It's like, yeah, I know. But I want to know if he choked him in the bathtub or he was backing out of his driveway. Yeah. It's, it, it's all context. So, I don't know, firing everyone for jokes or attempts at jokes or even when they go, it wasn't funny or – it was just mean or OK. Sometimes jokes are just mean. Well, and think about and I think we've sort of brought this up in the past. Oh, with the character. Um, what's his name? That's a child molester on SNL. And it yeah. was Gilda Radner and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, doesn't Lorne Michaels kind of have to look in the mirror when it comes to context and it comes to attempt at jokes that are inappropriate or did not age well or whatever? I mean, come on. That's a little hypocritical. <laughs> that's the craziest one ever. Well, well, that was before the woke crowd you know would get hold of you but it's you. still pretty shocking for what an eight minute bit or whatever it's we had a weird relationship in the 70s with pedophilia it was much more <laughs> thanks for explaining it more celebrated <laughs> it was like come yeah. sit on uncle johnny's lap and it'd be like no nah. <laughs> i mean it was it was just a joke it was played for laughs yeah it was really weird Really weird. And then we kind of transitioned into priest molesting, which was our second right. iteration Just of that kind around. of joke. Like, <laughs> that seems pretty fucked up, too. You know, but we remember how easily we just transitioned. Yeah. Oh, that guy's a priest. You know, well, look out. Yep. Camping with him. You know what that like, means. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> It's pretty far off with the priest, too, yeah. but we, we rolled we seamlessly there. right right into it. Yeah. yeah, And I'm trying to think of anyone that has escaped this, like in the recent couple of years. Obviously, Kevin Hart didn't escape it. This guy isn't. Trevor Noah, when he got the job to take over for Jon Stewart, there were lots of unearthed tweets, you know, when he was a comedian in South Africa and stuff that was really inappropriate. And, and he got the job and he's flourishing. He's doing great. Yeah. And I think he's a little... He's black Saved and South African, so he's got a little McManus. I don't know. but He does have an autobiography called Being Born a Crime or something, something like that. that. Yeah. yeah. So this guy, if you are – you can buy yourself a little love if you're on the right side of issues mm-hmm. or you're Apartheid. racial right. or whatever, whatever. You can you can get yourself a little goodwill, yeah. like maybe a get-out-of-jail-free card. You can't keep fucking up. You right. can just dodge the initial – wave that right. blows over you but uh, McManus doesn't sound like he's got to play that card I don't know what the guy looks like oh you're talking about Gillis I'm a Gillis yeah. sorry Sh- I think Shane Gillis Shane Gillis sorry he kinda, I, I could be wrong I might have to see a like picture of him again I always just see little thumbnails when I'm looking at stuff he might look like he could be a cousin of Will Sasso mm. if that if that does anything for you mm. oh white guy oh yeah mm-hmm. oh. yeah I don't uh, here's my whole thing with this I'm looking to move the needle. You know what I mean? Like, if there is racism, let's stamp it out. Uh, this this isn't that. So it's it's weird. It's nonsensical for me to go and after just... things that don't do anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like right. what chasing what, your tail, uh, chasing a shadow. Yeah, it's 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 Washington Redskins. You know, change the name of the teams. Like I don't know. Okay, so go go down to the reservation. Bring uh, Vinny Tortorich and let's talk nutrition. Like, no, change the name of the team. Like, okay. Our work is done. I, it, just, it doesn't feel like you're doing any, yeah. anything to help the people you're trying to help. So this guy's, I don't know. I don't know how much help the Asian community needs, but a guy who made a joke won't, won't be on it. Yeah. All right. Well, Rico Kasich, or Okasik, depending on how you prefer to say it, the front man of the cars, noted producer, member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, was found dead in his home. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, on, in Manhattan on Sunday, there are reports that he was both 75 and 70, so somewhere in between there. Uh, police found him unconscious at his townhouse after receiving a call about 4 p.m. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Um, I believe his current wife said that he had been recovering from surgery and she thought he was sleeping and, and felt his cheek and realized that he had passed in the night. Well, that's the way to go, right? Yeah, I think so. 
God, he must have been the weirdest kid in his in his high school, right? Yeah, kind of looks like a Gawad Green. I say probably a stirring. Uh, <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, like John Popper was the weirdest guy in his high school too, but he could play the he could play he just pull out that harmonica anytime yeah. he wanted and just go nuts on it. Yeah. I'm sure, there are a lot of friends in high school. <laughs> hey, weird guy, do the harmonica thing. Show us your harp, nerd. Trying to think of Rick. Yeah. Pretty we have, a little gothy. Can we find a high school yearbook photo of Rick? Okay, sick. That would, that would be, be amusing. That would be amusing to me, too. All right. Well, I got to say, it's one of those things. Um, it is one of those things that makes everyone feel old because. I, I don't even think of the Cars as an old band, even though they are an old band. But I, I think of Led Zeppelin and Leonard Skinner as old bands, and Cars are like new wave. You yeah, know? they're like new, new wave. In the name, they got the word new in there. When I lived in New York, there was this jazz showcase, and they asked me to do a jazz number. And since I don't really know jazz songs or like jazz songs, I did a jazz arrangement that my uh, that my vocal coach put together for me. For you might think. Oh, really? Yeah, it was cool. Did it work? Yeah, it was cool. I wish I still had that. Uh, all right, let me hit... Uh, what were the songs I said I liked, Max Zapata? Let me put them back oh, on I got a lot here. on my head. Was that a song I liked? Uh, you didn't tell me that one, no, but Which I'll put them... Which one? See, find that song. Yeah. They had, they had a lot of good songs, and they were, they were an interesting band. And uh, I Oh, and in the first concert I ever went to... Mm. I went to, um, it was like at the Long Beach Civic Arena or whatever. Jeff Katz, who's called into this show to talk about what a nut I was in high school, was like a year older than me, had a car. His grandmother's a Corona, a Toyota. Yeah, not the wagon, though. Oh, I was going to say my first car. (laughs) And, you know, somebody died and left him a car, and he... Bought two tickets. You know, it was the only way I was going sure. was some dude. He bought Floating, yeah. two tickets and had a car. Like the, 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 the two biggest barriers to entry oh. were the $13 yeah. for the ticket and then how are you getting to the Long Beach Civic Arena? I hope you put out. So, <laughs> so he, appreciation. He, uh, he picked me up and. Uh, Who opened? I Anyone do, that became big? Or? I do not have a recollection of um, who opened. For um, for the cars, if anyone, I'm sure somebody did, but I don't remember that being part of the look whatever. It up. Well, where was it? When was it? Uh, I don't know what the date. But oh, I mean, like... okay. Well, it would have been, I think, the Long Beach Civic Arena or somewhere. I remember it being like a beach on like Long Beach Arena. It would have been like circa 1980, possibly 81. We'll see if we can figure that out. Yeah. You have a good Kamala Beyonce comparison. Yeah, oh, really? I've been looking for this for a long time. I have always wanted to protect people and keep them safe. And second, I was born knowing about how this criminal justice system in America has worked in a way that has been informed by racial bias. Look at her, Jay. Sleeping yeah. peacefully in her crib. <laughs> it's lying with one of Diana Ross's finest wigs. Wow. Well <laughs> done, Galen. Wow. Yeah. Nice job. Nice pull. Although I'm talking to myself. So uh, I don't know. It's just I, now every time I just. That's You've infected all, I, all of that's us. All I, that's all I picture. All right. What else we got? All right. Well, Felicity Huffman was sentenced to two weeks in prison, but it is considered one of America's 10 cushiest prisons, according to Forbes. They have rankings for that? They do. Is there, there a plaque on everything. the wall? Is there a plaque on it the wall? It should be in travel and leisure. <laughs> yeah. The all-women's low-security federal correctional institute in Dublin, California. Oh, yeah. East Bay. Okay. Uh, It's called Chateau Dublin. That's what they call it. A former inmate confirmed, quote, we came up with the name because it's more of a luxury retreat than a prison. It's also easier to tell your neighbors you were at the chateau rather than a prison. The campus features acres of gardens, cool ocean breezes. Inmates here stay in private bungalows with cable TV, computers, floor to ceiling windows without bars. They're able to bring their own bedding and pillows and linens and no jumpsuits. They get comfy sweats. Well, uh, what's the weeks. point of going to prison if it's going to be sleepaway camp? Well, this is your perfect scenario. You could go for two weeks, get something done Write in a, a beautiful book. bungalow. Yeah, it's always funny when uh, I, I was laughing with Garagas about this last week because, like, you know, when these things come out and then they go, 
she could get seven years in a federal <laughs> prison. And, and then the, whoever's on the talking head on this, like, oh, yeah, no, no, the federal guidelines between four and seven. Like, you go, she's not going to do – she's going to do four years no. or three years or whatever. And then – it becomes a symbolic thing because it's two weeks and it's... But who's paying for the symbolism? And, and also, I don't care. I, you know, speaking of Joe Biden, Joe Biden said something and in one of the debates, he's like, I just don't want people that weren't violent in prison, which I agree on, but I'm going to take that a step further. Uh, guys who don't pay their taxes aren't being violent. Mm. So yeah, let's, thanks, Joe. let's keep going down that road, yeah. meaning that's fine. But tell that to Wesley Snipes or everyone or tell that to the situation or like Willie tell, Nelson. T- tell it to Willie. Like tell it. There's a lot of people done a lot of time uh, for not paying taxes. And if you're going to say, well, this guy was dealing a little weed, but that's a nonviolent mm-hmm. offender. I would say there's nothing less violent than not paying taxes. That's just purely a monetary mm-hmm. thing. So be consistent. I would be curious if Joe was in charge, if he would enact the don't pay taxes, don't go to jail. I that think is his buddies non- would approve. That is nonviolent. Yeah. Uh, and just let me tell you, uh, she's jo- she's in good company because a couple other famous in, uh, inmates mm. that have been in Chateau Dublin, Heidi Fleiss and mm. Patty Hearst, mm. both went to the Chateau Dublin. Brian, this is a kind of soul man sitcom. <laughs> Uh, where uh, it's a like movie it. <laughs> where the guy's been trying to get the script to the famous actress mm-hmm. and befriend and whatever, and mm-hmm. it's like never could get near it. Right. You know, never always driven up. The, the part was written for her, right? And and yet like, trying to like the first scene, like trying to mm-hmm. shove it under the gate at the yeah. mansion and the dog that <laughs> yeah. tears it up. You know what I mean? Can't get. You go, re- he real. goes to Craig's over. He knows she goes to dinner. You know what right. I mean? And, like trust up met her. He's like again. It's like come right. on. It's all Act One mm-hmm. stuff. At a certain point, when they go in for this, realizes that's their opportunity to dress as a woman and try to commit a low-level crime mm-hmm. and get pushed in. Yeah. And we have the one guy who's his attorney buddy. It's kind of think of Jim Belushi in uh, Salvador or something like that. Like a kind of yeah, yeah. he's a fucked up attorney, but he but, says he's got a plan. You know, I could get you into this. I'm going to back up half a step because it's it's a stretch to think that you commit a crime and end up at that exact. You know what I mean? She, he in drag. Like I like that idea. Applies for a prison warden job. Not warden, but a, a prison guard. You know what I mean? The guard of prison. That way, that way he has the you know, the ability to just go up to his cell whenever he wants. I think it's funnier if they get thrown in. <laughs> You're right. it. it is funnier. But it, it, it's stupid. Like, it's impossible. But that's where okay. the lawyer has yeah. the end. That's where he knows. He mm-hmm. knows just what to do and just what to say to this judge to get tossed into whatever. Okay. And then the next thing you know, they're in, but they have to do it dressed as a woman. And uh, a love fair oh. uh, fair oh. ensues. Oh. I don't know. But, okay. So, she symbolically, she's got to go to prison for two weeks, except for it's a cupcake prison mm-hmm. so it's not symb- it is symb- I- it is so then who cares and she's going to mm-hmm. do 250 hours of community service serving her neighborhood mm-hmm all right I can't find anything about the cars playing in long beach but they did play at the forum in inglewood did you go there uh, what year uh both 1979 and 1980 december 19th and 20th of 1979 it's definitely december i well, think yeah there you go who they, also, forum. they also played the next year in september 27th 1980 but if you're thinking it's December, they played two shows uh, at the Forum, 19th and 20th of December, 79. Felt like Christmas break, and I probably didn't know where I was going. <laughs> so I'd never been even to, like, I'd never been to the Forum. I'd never been to a Lakers game. Yeah. or that, that, Those, we had cars with a, uh, about the range of a cheap drone. Like, that's as far as we could get from our house. Right. Like, if someone said, look, you can stand on the lawn with a cheap drone, how far can you get it away before you, you lose control of it? You wouldn't make it to the Galleria. No. We, That'd be like an eight-block radius, maybe. No, for we had a very tight radius because we had cars, pardon the pun, that they had, like, retreads and got vapor lock <laughs> and just, like, we couldn't chance getting too far from home and it was expensive and blah, blah, blah. So I really didn't know where Inglewood it was even though it was I, I, I lived here, it was kind of down that direction. Yeah, it was down south. Yeah. And I, I remember just going that direction for yeah. what seemed like a long period of time in a Corona. Topping sure. out at 32 miles an hour. Probably.
All right, Gina. What well, else? the dog, the bounty hunter, has been hospitalized. Uh, oh. That happened over the weekend after suffering a heart emergency that may require surgery. Uh, that is according to TMZ. Sources told TMZ the reality star uh, was taken to a hospital from his home in Colorado after feeling a pain in his chest. Might have been a heart attack, but they're told doctors are doing tests to determine what exactly that was. Also trying to figure out if he'll need corrective surgery. Mm, I like that guy. Yeah. He was an interesting guy, and we got a lot of feedback on how surprised people were um, on his appearance here. I don't think that people give enough credit to people. Maybe, I don't know, maybe certain kinds of reality TV have screwed this up for us. But most of the time, by the time people make it on the TV and have some success mm. there's some backstory that's very interesting reality tv has ruined this yeah you know i mean he's the, the bachelor outli- show he's the outlier when it comes to reality TV. well shows. it's funny because reality tv has like chef reality mm. shows and that's skill based right. and then they have dating mm. ones that's being 23 right. and not fat you know like like there's the ones it, it's sort of in a weird way it kind of represents the highest of the skill sets mm. and the zero of the yeah. skill sets whereas acting is just somewhere in between so there's usually a story. It's always much more interesting than you could have really imagined. Mm-hmm. And we also are all down rounders. Like we all go, oh, that guy just grew his hair out and mm-hmm. wandered into the gig. You know, we, we love to yeah. be dismissive. And we also kind of love to, you know, we it's 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 the version of daddy's money. Like, oh, that guy's really successful. Yeah, I bet his dad was gaming. Up. You know, like it's, it's we just right. do what's convenient. We don't have to think that much. And it makes us feel a little better about yeah. not having money. Yeah. So there's or having a reality TV show. <laughs> so we do too much of that. Yeah, it's 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 a little dismissive. We do the same thing with pop stars. You know what I mean? Like you think they're oh so much fluff, and yeah. then your daughter Auto-tune. drags you to go see the show. The I don't know Ariana Katie, Grande, uh, Katy Perry, whoever. And you, then you walk out going, oh, they're oh, I get it. Right. I get why they sell yeah. billion records. Like they're good at what they do. Oh, nothing. She was at a private charity event I got to attend one time, and I was blown away by her. I, it's basically I, acoustic. I would think most every parent I've talked to of a like nine year old girl who got sucked into some teeny bopper concert <laughs> mm-hmm. walked away more impressed yeah. than the kid because the kid yeah. had was ready to be oh, yeah. wow. The, 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 the dad is like, oh, this snooze fest, right. it's, it's all going to be pumped in and yep. auto tuned, and, and then they walk away mm-hmm. going, she picked up the because the guitar. And it's like, yeah, there's a reason they're there. Yeah, if you ever kind of do the uh joe's versus pros thing like if you ever have this fantasy of like eh, maybe i could tr- go a few rounds with the klitschko brothers or something <laughs> or i could post up right. carl malone or something you quickly realize why they're there right. and why you're watching them do right. what yeah. they're doing versus being out on stage right. or on the court or in the ring with them how many times have we watched sports at some point in our lives like that guy sucks like right well he right. probably doesn't suck he, yeah. he played four years of college ball and now he's yeah. in the pros and but he mixed he missed that 62 <laughs> yarder i mean he hit the upright that guy sucks yeah i know and then you go out there and those guys throw you a pass Good and luck. it hurts breaks a rib mm-hmm. and you're like oh okay you get I, it now. I, Yes, I get it. You you try covering that guy. You know, you're yelling at the guy. For, He's got a four steps he ran on right him. Past him. Right, right. Yeah, yes. he has a four, four That's 40. actually, right. that's exactly what I was thinking during the debates. Like, yes, some of these guys sound like morons. And yes, this is boring. I would not trade places with them for any amount of money. The cars evidently played with sticks. You forgot sticks was there? Yeah. Least, oh, my God. Was sticks the headliner? No, I don't know. Think about where they were yeah. at that point. Oh, yeah, that was 79, yeah. You would have oh. gone to a stick show. Yeah, you would have. Oh, no, that couldn't the, be. No, it. I went to a car show. This must have been something That's else. That's funny. Yeah. All right. Well, Michael Jordan's in the tequila business now, and he partnered up with a bunch of super wealthy NBA owners to launch his liquor. That's according to TMZ. Uh, he partnered up with the Lakers, Bucks, and Celtics owners, and they're going to drop Sin Coro, a new premium tequila. Uh, for pretty tequilas, crowded market, Michael. <laughs> oh, listen! You always pivot to something else. Listen to the uh, price range on some of these; they're not cheap. Uh, there's a blanco. Hold on, there's know. a guy in there that looks like I raped Mark Cuban, <laughs> and then our offspring <laughs> raped um, Elliot Gould. You're right. And then this yeah. guy was the product of, of the three-way of love that, child. <laughs> love child. 
Who is that guy? Is Mark Cuban, me, and Elliot Gould? He's either the owner of or part owner of the Celtics or the Bucks because there's Jeannie Buss. I don't think Who he's gives part a of the shit? Lakers. Oh, come on. But Elliot, come on now. I thought that was a pretty witty observation. Do you know something that I don't know? I know you were raped by Mark Cuban. Always. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, we're getting somewhere. I'm just saying, uh, Elliot, if that is your real name. I don't care. No, you don't care. All right. Well, I'll just call you Elliot. I just feel like this guy looks like Cuban. You and me got put into some sort of smoothie pulverizer and poured into one weird nappy headed frosty mug. No, I don't think it is. Well, you're not looking at what I'm looking at. What's his name? What? I have to be uh, honest. I, I don't know who the fuck he is. Wink? What's his Wick? name? Wick. It's short for Wycliffe, but Wick or Wyke. Bruce, Bruce Beck, the uh, owner of the Celtics. Mm. Don't it's, you know anything about it? No, I don't. I'm just looking at a guy with, uh, <laughs> you know, Michael Jordan putting his arms around him. You want to talk some more? <laughs> I forgot how great that was. I still didn't really fully figure it out what that was, Brian. The LA Gold thing? Yeah. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> I, you, you actually, I think early on, people can maybe get a lot of response right away. Like, what was up with LA Gold on the live show? And I think you, you touched on it and you maybe you abandoned your own idea. But like, certain people are more comfortable doing a persona or an act or a character you know, like rather than submit to just an interview and playing along some people i think ellie gould's one of them would rather sort of stand at a distance and take the tact of being the confused you know what i mean the there, confused there, guy. there's two or so there's two kinds of bad interviewees that do there's two things people fall into there's your basic morning show radio, like, they're lame. That was lame. That was lame. See that J-Lo movie? Yeah, that no. was lame. Dude, that no. was lame. Like, they just go lame. They, so no. they just go, they just say mm-hmm. everything is lame. No. Everyone's lame. Everything's beneath them. R- right. Who gives a shit? There's that. And then there's a weird version where people point out specific stuff that, like, the audience can't see or something you said off the air. Mm-hmm. Or they circle a make fun of someone who's sitting next to somebody right. but the audience can't it's see that joke. person yeah. it's like there's there's the lame guy and then there's the weird insider and then there's the just sort of negative naysayer in in an attempt usually so there's there's kind of there's kind of two there's three ways you can be funny you can be funny that always helps what's number two number two is just like Cursing a lot, going fuck that, you know that's lame. And then there's I stuff. Have to be uh, honest, I, I don't know who the fuck he is. And then there's that one where it's like, I don't know who you are, I don't know what this is. What does that mean? <laughs> it's it's all sort of an, an attempt now. Correct. If you can just be funny, I think you just choose that one. Yeah, it's but an always. easier road. But it's a, if it, you're funny. If you're funny, It'll always, be, always, uh, always, always, <laughs> all the, always. Uh, every day and twice on Sunday. <laughs> we just did. Yeah. But not everyone can just sit there and be funny for 40 minutes. You know what I mean? So they pick a kind of a more negative Lame. road. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I don't think it is. Huh? Okay. Okay. He doesn't agree. All right. Um, Kaylin, can you put that picture back up for a second uh, with Michael and all the guys? Um, not that this is as astute as your observation, but guy on the other side, Colin Quinn and Lance Bass had a baby. Mm-hmm. It's on the table. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this is going to have uh, Blanco, Re- Reposado, Anejo, and Extra Anejo. I think eventually booze and especially tequila are going to be like podcasts. Like everyone's just going to have yeah, their own. Have one. Yeah. Is Welcome it? to my tequila podcast. <laughs> <laughs> tequila it's a generator. Good, there, there are going to be more podcasts yeah. than there are people to listen to podcasts. Mm-hmm. And there will be more variety of tequila. Yes. And also, you, you got to think about, I always think about like Jose Cuervo or something like that. They just had to market to themselves mm-hmm. for 40 years. Like, <laughs> just, well, no one will bother us 40 years. Like, I, I always think about, you go to Home Depot, you walk the aisle, and if you wanted a cordless drill, you had to buy a Makita because Makita was the only one who made a cordless drill 25 years ago. Mm-hmm. It's just, that was it. And they, they enjoyed, you know, 15 years of sort of uninterrupted. Well, we corner the market. There's nobody who nobody. If you want, if you want a, uh, if you want a cordless drill, you must buy a Makita. And was then, there no Black and Decker? No, there just really wasn't anything. And at some point, 
everyone just kind of went, oh, we could make one. And now Makita's just got to get out there and slug it out with Ryobi and, like, you know, Hitachi. There's everybody else. Right. Everybody else. And I, I feel that way with Jose Cuervo and maybe a couple other brands. Like, there was... When I grew up, it's like you're doing shots of Cuervo. Yeah, that's what you call it. You don't call it tequila. Yeah, it was like Cuervo Gold or White or whatever, but there are so many I'd be many interested now. to know how many or how much these specialty tequilas, the high-end stuff, mm-hmm. these, these types of stuff, are chipping away at the Cuervo market share of the world because – they're going for the biggest net possible. You know what I mean? They're selling tequila at $15 a bottle. They're not selling it at $50 right, a bottle. Like no one, I imagine people who are buying Cuervo aren't considering Michael Jordan's tequila. Well, right? his no. aged extra Anejo is $1,600 a bottle. Yeah, but people, yeah, people that are looking at Smirnoff aren't looking at Skull. Yeah, Crystal Dan, Skull. Vodka, right, right, yeah, yeah. right. But I would bet you that just like in the beer department, you know, Budweiser mm-hmm. and Coors and everything, Miller. I bet you these big companies will be gobbling up Getting some of the, these yeah. little. It's yep. like I don't know what was it, Hershey's or Nestle. I, can't, I always forget the one, but they bought like Crave Jerky. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, they see mm-hmm. the little guys nipping at their heels. Well, Coca Cola bought the Croyers or some version of that. You know what I mean? Like just. Yeah. You yeah, you're just just big enough, and they'll they'll snap you up. Wasn't that little mom and pop place Chipotle um, bought by McDonald's? McDonald's, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's also uh, look no further than they started running the Ford v Ferrari commercials on uh, Football Sunday last week, and uh, look no further than Ford trying to buy Ferrari mm-hmm. back in the day to win. They're just a little nothing mm-hmm. boutique, but they made a better product. Like a good IPA yeah. versus a right. Natty Light, so Might they're well like, let's, let's just buy them, yep. and we'll we'll have a great. We don't have to develop a product. Mm-hmm. We're on the podium as soon as we buy theirs, yep. and that's uh, how it works. Hershey's brought, bought uh, Crave. That's mm-hmm. right. All right, let's do one more. All right. Well, a Missouri woman is fighting to keep her emotional support pets, not dogs, not bunnies, <sighs> not teeny tiny mice. Three monkeys. She's had them for years. Here's a clip of one of them. Uh, she's a bonnet macaque and she's eight Kalyanna is one of three monkeys living in Texan McBride Teahan's Creve Corps home you okay? oh man got something in your eye? she was hot in high school yeah, yeah Texan, her name's Texan McBride Teahan, uh, may lose possession of those animals after a neighbor spotted one of them outside about a month ago. Uh, monkeys are considered an inherently dangerous animal, along with alligators, lions, and pythons. They are prohibited in residential areas, according to the city in Missouri. Uh, McBride Teahan defended her monkeys at a city council meeting September 9th, saying they're emotional support monkeys and that she even has a doctor's note. And she says the animals help her cope with PTSD from an incident from when she was a teenager by the way has anything gone from meaning more to meaning less than doctor's note yeah. like when i was God. in the fifth grade if you had a doctor's note like he's got strep throat he's got, yeah. got a doctor's note it's like oh, he didn't have to go to school yeah now it's like a doctor's if someone goes yeah. i gotta know for my doctor yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah to get weed or to get a pet, <laughs> a pet on the plane yeah, yeah. a vest what, so you get a fucking reach around <laughs> next time you're riding your service pig <laughs> Goddamn hashish. <laughs> hashish. <laughs> Although of all the support animals, monkeys should be the only one that's okay. The smartest by far, the closest to humans. Yeah, but they do go monkey. Like, they do eat people's faces yeah, from time true. to time. We saw, saw Planet of the Apes. Yeah. This is how that shit starts. That's a documentary. The, the war, th- we have a problem, which is the craziest people on the planet are most attracted to animals. Yeah. M- Michael Jackson and Bubbles. Yeah, like they're the most fucked up, the most mm. wounded, the the worst. They're all super into animals. And now it's our yeah. burden as well. Come home right. to roost. So Let's bring it home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Go fuck yourself. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad.